Okay guys, so today I'm going to show you how to create your own custom header and footer in WordPress. Now for this, we are going to use Elementor. And as you can see here by the side in our menu section, it is already installed. Now, just to confirm, this is the free version and all additional features and plugins that we are going to use in this tutorial are also free. So I went ahead and installed a demo website that we can work from. And this is taken from the Astra theme, which is also free, by the way. Now, as you can see on screen, we have a very basic header at the moment and it's the same with the footer. So nothing outstanding, as you can see. Now we're going to create our own custom header and footer. So let me show you how to do that. So we go back to our WordPress dashboard. And from here, we're going to install an additional plugin. Again, this plugin is free of charge, costs you nothing. And the same, it works with Elementor free version as well. So let's go to plugins, add new. And in the search box, look for Elementor header and footer builder. So this is the one here. So let's install this. There you go. And now we need to activate it. Perfect. So now our plugin is installed and activated. There is one more step we need to take in order for it to work with Elementor. So now we're going to Elementor settings and make sure you enable and tick this box here. So this way, this will work in conjunction with Elementor. And then don't forget to click save changes. Perfect. Now we are all set. So if you look here in the menu section, if you go into appearance, you can see we have an additional tab called Elementor header and footer builder. So click on this. Now, when you get here, you might already find an existing header and footer. As you can see, we already have a footer here, which corresponds to the one we have here. So don't worry about this. Keep them there for now. You can always delete them afterwards. So first, we're going to create our custom header and footer, and then we can delete the existing ones. It's just safer this way, you know. So click on add new to create your new one. Now, from here, we need to give it a title. So let's call it maybe simply custom header. And then we need to select the type of template. So as you can see here, we can select among a few options. So we have header before footer, footer and custom block. So these are the four options available to us. And clearly for custom header, we're going to select header. And then after this, we can set up a few rules. So the first one is display on. So on which pages do you want to display that header? So if you click on the drop down menu here, you can see you have many, many different options. So the one we'd be interested in ourselves at the moment, we're going to keep it simple, is to uh, display it basically on the entire website. So throughout the whole website on all the pages. Now, feel free to play around and use any of the other options if you want to display it on specific pages. But let's go with entire website at the moment. And then you can even define who can see that header based on user roles. So if you select this, you can see you can display it for everyone only for logged in users, logged out users, or on specific uh, roles as well. So let's keep it simple for now, just select it for all. And then when you're happy enough with your selection, click publish. And now we can edit with Elementor. Now we're going to create our header. So click on this big blue button here in the middle, edit with Elementor. Okay, so before we go ahead with this, let's have a quick look at our header again, just to, as a reminder. So as you can see, it's very basic. All you have is just a logo and the name next to it and a hamburger here. So maybe you can recreate something more like this one here with the logo on the left hand side, the menu section in between, and maybe a call to action button on the right hand side. So this would be absolutely perfect, wouldn't it? So let's go ahead with this and let's recreate something similar to that. So back to our Elementor page here. So the first thing we need to do is to create a new section. So we click on the plus sign here and we need to select our structure. So ideally, maybe we're going to select three columns. So we have one for the logo, one for the menu and one for the call to action button. So let's click on this. And now we have our section with three columns. So we have one, two and three columns, as you can see. Now, don't worry, we can always resize them afterwards, make them bigger and smaller. But first, let's take care of inserting elements into our sections. So maybe we could start by inserting our logo. And for this, we're going to click on this icon here. So click on this just like that. And this will display all the, the available elements that we can drag and drop on our page. Now, right here in the section, in the search box, you're going to type in logo. Now we are presented with two different options. And as you can see, this one has a little padlock next to it because this one is only available with the pro version. And as we said, we're only going to use free features. And this one is free, so you can just drag and drop this one here, just like that. So by default, it will fetch the logo that's linked to your demo website. So as you can see, this is the one that came with Astra. So this is the one that's showing up here. 
Now, if you wanted to upload your own custom logo, all you have to do is to go into custom image and enable tog the toggle switch here. So basically turn that on and now we can upload our own logo, personal logo. So click on this, upload file, select files, and then upload your logo. So open and then click insert media. So as you can see this button here, click on this. And as you can see now on screen, we have our own custom logo now. Just underneath our logo, we have a few options here. And the first one is the image size. So clearly a logo shouldn't be too big. So depending on the size of your original file, file you might want to reduce it, maybe up to 300 by 300, maybe 150 by 150. As you can see, 150 by 150 is still fine, is still displaying. And next we have the alignment. As you can see, it is centered at the moment, but usually for a logo, it's probably best if it is uh, aligned to the left. And finally, in relation to our logo, we can now resize the width of our column. So if you hover on top of the two columns here, you'll see uh, displayed a double arrow. And now we can use this to resize our column. So depending on the size of your logo, try to bring it as close as possible. Leave a little bit of margin just to be on the safe side. And this will be just about perfect now. And as always, don't forget to click update to save your work. Now we can insert our call to action button on the right hand side. So for this, it's a button here, as you can see immediately displayed on our screen. So drag and drop this now. And now we can start customizing our button. So as you can see, the first options, we have a few different types. We can select info, success, warning, or danger. So you can select any of them. Feel free to select any of them. And don't worry if you don't like the colors, we can always go into style and change the colors afterwards. So just select one of them. We're going to insert some text. So maybe request a quote. Obviously on the actual website, you would put the link, the, the landing page basically. And then we need to select the alignment. Now, again, this button is on the right hand side. So the best thing would be to align it to the right. And then you can even select the size. So you have extra small, small, medium, large, and extra large. So I think small is just about the perfect size for us at the moment. And then we can stylize this button. So again, we can change the color and the font color as well. So from here, you can see we have the text color and the background type. So if we click on this color here, the pencil, we can go and select our own color. So maybe you want it to be a vivid red like this and maybe change the font color to white. And now it stands out, obviously, you know, but now again, select any color uh, that fits your uh, branding and uh, the rest of your website. And again, don't forget to click update. And now we're going to add the menu section right in the middle here. So again, we're going to go into our elements and just type in menu. And the one we are interested in is called navigation menu. So this one here, so just grab and drop it. And as you can see, our menu is now displaying in the middle. So let's save our header by clicking update and let's have a quick look at our front page now. So this is the header we used to have. Now, if we refresh this page, there you go. As you can see, now we have our own custom header displaying. We have a call to action button, our menu in the middle and our logo displaying on the left. And that looks absolutely fine, doesn't it? Now, depending on the type of theme and the type of templates that you have installed, you might want to add a background color to your menu section here. So maybe you can add a color similar to his jacket here. So let me show you how to do this. So we go back to Elementor and we're going to select the whole section here. So click on this and now we're going to go to style and we're going to add a background color. As you can see, this is the background section. So click on the paintbrush and now we're going to add the color. So I went ahead and selected that color. So this about this. This is the same as the jacket and then click update. And now if we go back to our home page and refresh, as you can see, we now have a background color behind our menu section. So that looks great, doesn't it? Very good, very good. Now let's take care of our photo section. So as you can see, we have nothing outstanding. It's very basic. So let's go back to our WordPress dashboard. And again, we're going to appearance, Elementor, header and footer builder. As you can see, this is where our custom header is at the moment. And now we're going to create our custom footer. And for this, we're going to click add new. And we are going to follow the exact same steps we did with the header, but for our footer this time. So let's give it a title. So custom footer, what type of templates So this time, this is a footer. And we, which uh, page are we going to display this on? We're going to display that on the entire website and for everyone as well. So click publish. And now we can edit with Elementor.
And now we can create our new section. So click on the plus sign. And now we're going to have to select our structure. So usually for a footer section, we might have an border section, maybe a few links, and then some contact details. So maybe a three column section would be just about perfect. So we could select this one here. So that means that we'll have a broader section for the about us and maybe two smaller ones for the links. So let's click on this. Now, before you can insert all the different elements in your different sections and columns, you'll have to decide which background color you're going to select, because if it's a dark color, obviously all the fonts and elements will have to be white on a brighter color to have contrast. And if it's a bright color, it's the other way around. You need a black font or black elements to have enough contrast. So again, back to our website here, we might select a color similar to this uh, bubble speech here, maybe an orangey color, which would be absolutely fine. Or we can go with a darker color to match our font. So why not go with a bright color like this? We're going to keep the same yellow for now. Again, make sure that you select the right color for your footer before you go ahead with this uh, next step. So just make sure that you selected your section here. We're going to do to style. And then we're going to add a background color now. So click on the paintbrush, click on the color icon here. And you can either select a color or paste the color code like this. And now we can start designing and customizing our footer. So let's start by adding headings. So let's click on this icon again. And you can see we have a heading here. So drag and drop it. And the first one we're going to call it about us. And we're going to resize this a little bit because that's a little bit too big. So maybe an H4 tag would be just about perfect. And we're going to do the same with this section here. So we're going to add a heading here as well. This one, we're going to call it Quick Links. Again, we're going to select H4. I'm going to click on this one here, add a heading. And we're going to call this one Contact and change the size again to H4. So let's finish the about us section so we can add a bit of text underneath uh, to give your visitors a bit of context. So just like this. And maybe underneath this, we could add maybe some social media icons. So again, back to here, we're going to type in icons and we're going to select this one here, social icons. And we're going to drag and drop it just underneath our about us section. So first, let's align this to the left. It looks a lot better like this. And then you can select the shape. So at the moment, as you can see, it's a rounded edges, rounded corners, but you can select square. So this is rough edges. And then we have circle as well. So let's go with circle for now. I think that looks very nice. And then we can take care of our social media icons. So as you can see at the moment, we have three of them. We have Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So let's say if you wanted to add an additional one, just click on add item. And if you wanted to delete an item, just click on the X sign and it will delete it. And then if you click on any of them, you can edit them very easily. You can change the icon. So let's say if you wanted to add another social media uh, platform, maybe you have uh, Instagram, maybe you want Pinterest, maybe you want to add a Twitch or any of them, you can select the icon you want to display. And then you can add the link to your social media page. Now we might want to add a little bit of breathing space all around our section here because like you can see it's a bit cramped and it's a bit too close to the other section. So what we do is just click on our column here. You can see this gray icon, click on this. And now we're going to edit our column. So we're going to advanced and we're going to add a bit of padding all around it. So maybe start with 25 pixels. If that's not enough, you can add a little bit more, maybe 40. And I think this looks fine. So let's keep 40 for now. Now let's take care of our quick link section. So we're going to add a menu just underneath it. So back to our elements, type in menu. And this time we're going to select navigation menu. So drag and drop it just underneath. And now we're going to select the menu that we want to display. So select any menu available. So maybe the primary menu and just like this. And as you can see now, it's displaying nicely underneath our heading. Very good. And finally, we're going to take care of our contact section. So back to our menu here. And we're going to type in icon and this time we're going to insert the icon list So this one here to drag and drop it just underneath. Very good. So maybe here we could have our phone number, email address and then physical address of your premises and uh, your office. So for this, very simply click on any of those items. So edit and then we can change the icon first. So the first one will be phone. So let's type in phone. Let's search for a phone. 
And maybe you could have this icon here, which is absolutely fine. Insert. And now we can put the text that will go next to it. So let's put our phone number. And as you can see, now we have a phone icon and next to it, our phone number. Now we can do the same with the email address and our physical address as well. So just like that, basically, very good. And now what we can do is to add some padding and some breathing space around those two sections as well. So they'll be lined up with the about us. So we click on our column here. We're going to advanced. We're going to add the same amount of padding, so 40. And we're going to do the same with the column, uh, the contact column. So click on this, advanced, and also add 40. There you go. Now we're going to click update. And now let's go back to our home page and let's have a look at what it looks like. So this is what the footer was before. So let's refresh our page. And there you go. This is our brand new footer. And as you can see, it looks absolutely fantastic and really professional.